Well, welcome again to RDWorks Learning Lab. Today I'm going to start off by showing you a lot of preparation work that I did on my machine by way of modifications to help me deal with the problem of mirror setup. Now I've had my mirrors in and out many times over the past week or two and it's made me very aware of the design weaknesses of the machine. There are further design weaknesses that get in the way of making calibration of the mirrors simple. Today I'm going to turn any procedure that you've ever seen completely upside down. We're hardly going to touch the mirrors at all in our procedure for setting up the mirrors. Now I know that sounds a contradictory statement but um, you'll have to just carry on, watch and see what I mean. Now what I must say is that before I started I fitted my new adjustable clamps and I set them up to all their nominal positions. Now the big assumption here was that the back plate and the base plate of the tube enclosure were basically parallel and in line with the X and Y axis but it was based on the fact that the machines are built production built on jigs and that things won't be very far out of line so I started off by using those as a datum to set the tube to. Before we start our line of sight setting procedure I've got my adjustable tube clamps fitted and I've got screw adjustment there which allows me to wind, these, wind this in and out by three millimeters and I've got an adjuster on here which allows me if I undo this wing nut I can lift the tube up and down by plus or minus three millimeters as well. So both these clamps are set in their nominal position of X and Y hopefully if I've got my design measurements right um, this bit here will be in line with this bit here. Now I just mentioned about setting this piece here in line with this piece here. Um, until just recently when I started playing around with the mirrors in my total ignorance I was very happy to think that this was the easy bit of the job aligning up this with that because I've got a barn door to aim at but when we start looking at construction of that block the laser beam goes in there hits the red mirror and comes out the other side. Now although the mirror is mounted in a frame, the frame masks the mirror. The net result is that we have only got a 12 millimeter wide pink mirror to aim at with the green laser which is six or seven millimeters diameter. So in reality across this way we've only got a very small margin of error which will need some of that pink to allow the laser beam to be steered onto the mirror when we go through the setting procedure. So it's because of this that I'm quite careful about how I've set up this tube to make sure that it does fire at the centre of that mirror. The other essential thing that we must do before we start is any calibration or any setting that you've got on this mirror here must be removed. And what I've done I've got a three millimeter spacing pin here which I've used to set up this block in all corners so that it sits with a three millimeter air gap behind it. Now that gives me maximum amount of float to set this up when we come to set the mirrors but the whole principle of this system is really don't touch the mirrors. We're going to touch the mirrors very very small amounts at certain key points in time. The principle of this procedure is really to leave this mirror set at its nominal 45 position, 45 degree position, and use the laser tube itself as one of the adjustable elements. We'll go and look at some of the other changes that I've made in preparation for doing this uh, line of sight setup procedure. So I think I've shown you before that on the corner of my machine where we need to access to set the mirrors it's virtually impossible. So consequently what I've done is a little modification on both this corner and the rear corner and I've fitted a little door. Now that door gives me good access to my mirrors. It was supplied with thumb screws like this. To make them easier to adjust what I've done I've hacksawed a slot in each one of the adjusting screws so that it's now nice and easy to adjust it with a screwdriver. Now the other thing that I've done is because of the springs on this system being so strong I can't see that these thumb screws 
actually need a lock nut on them so I've removed the lock nut as well because that's just an annoyance it gets in the way sometimes when you're trying to make an adjustment well here's number two mirror and I've taken it all apart and um, I've done my own modifications to it now there was just not enough float in this head as soon as you started twisting the angle the screws the the screws that come out the back here started binding on their spring holes so what I've done I've opened up the spring holes to full size eight millimeters diameter the springs will actually pass right the way through don't get too upset about that because all I've got to do is put a washer on the end so the spring springs no longer pass through but look there's huge angular adjustment now so the plate can sit at any angle and it shouldn't bind up on these threads okay not the prettiest job in the world but I've produced some necked screws now that will give me a little bit more clearance without making the holes bigger now wherever I look on this machine I'm finding little detail problems that are getting in the way of me wanting to make things nice and simple that, that little corner there is hitting I've got a, a 1.5 millimeter bracket there thick and I can't get that corner down because and it's one of the things that's stopping this from from twisting it's purely because that corner when I twist it anymore sits on this little bracket and I can't physically get this bracket any further away because the adjusting holes the fixing holes in the bracket don't allow it so now I've got to modify the fixing holes in the bracket to pull that away slightly. Now that I've got the head off, I've got a huge amount of adjustment in there, but none of it's in the right direction. <laughs> right now I'm going to fix this block back on as far as I can this way. I can't just bolt it on anywhere. I've got to have it on at pretty close to 45 degrees. I didn't see any sign of movement. No, that, that's pretty good for 45 degrees. Well, at last we have this set up with our three millimeter air gap because I've messed around with the position of this mirror and also I've got my head here which has got adjustments in two planes up and down and in and out I can't guarantee that this hole here lines up with that hole there in other words the center of this ideally should be on the same center as that mirror so what I've done, I've manufactured a small setting bar which will fit into there and allow me to approximately check the alignment of it. Now, as I look at it like that, it looks pretty good across that way. And as it happens, it's pretty good up and down as well so I don't have to worry too much I'm, I'm rather lucky um, I've just happened to have set the head up <laughs> nearly perfectly right, the other thing that I have to worry about with the head is whether or not it's square to the base now you may need a mirror to do this or maybe you can get your eye down in line with everything but I'm going to give you a privileged view so the camera is pretty well lined up with the axis of this hole and as I zoom through that hole as the foreground goes out of focus the rear ground should come into focus what we can now see is the uh, oval shaped mirror in this number two mirror but what we can't see is the laser itself which we should be able to see you can see the background and as we move this we can bring the background onto center now we should be able to wobble that up by dropping the bottom two screws. Right, well I think that's probably the laser tube there, but let's go beyond this second mirror here and let's go and have a look. Because we can see the second mirror here, you can see the picture disappearing out of the second mirror as I'm adjusting it. So I've got the laser coming right down the centre of this second mirror. And then we'll come back even further to the head. So now all three of these are in line. 
Now I'm not advocating that you should use your video camera for this but it is certainly a very good use for it. What I can say to you is when you put your eye down here and look through there you can actually see it very nicely as well. So it's easy enough to put your eye there to do it. With this last mirror we've got a, a sixteenth, a 1.5 millimeter thick piece of welding wire or maybe a nail or something like that which we can pop through there and we can tighten up the back one until it just bites then we can do the front one until it just begins to bite and then we'll do this top one here and there we go so we've now set this plate 1.5 millimeters clear of this surface which gives us a little bit of float to work with when we come to set it up technically when we do a pulse test now, we should find it coming right through to number three here. We'll just do a broadband check of where it is. Oh dear, I don't think it's even making it into the first one. <laughs> this is a very convenient point to stop part one of this two part series. We've achieved the line of sight between the cutting head mirror and the laser tube. Now that's a very important feature of this procedure and in part two we shall go through a procedure which aligns the laser beam very accurately with the X and Y axes of the machine in both the vertical and the horizontal planes.